I think we, FKPM or Cosmos could do a lot of work with APN. Yeah, I can see you guys are really passionate about APN. So thank you again for inviting me. And I think the topic is about bioequivalent studies, right? So we know that the world changes every year that goes by, right? We have to evolve in the way the world goes. Who knew mobile phones? Who knew you could take photographs, etc. and Kodak died, yeah? Okay. So we have to we we have we have to stop being a dinosaur, yeah. And we live with whatever challenges there are in the world. And sometimes challenges are good, yeah, because it just makes us motivated, makes us feel young and energized. So we, this morning I was with PPB. They had a stakeholders meeting regarding the area of BE. While WHO is pushing us for this, to get to ML3, and one of the requirements is to have bees on our products. Um, I think the question is not that what we want, it's the how. How do we go about doing it? Yeah? If you're gonna do it tomorrow, uh, Cosmos, everything you do, B, Cosmos will say, and somewhere else. So they understand that as well. Yeah. So how are we going to do it? So I, I said there are a lot of challenges. One we just talked about earlier, the CROs. There are not enough CROs here, right? And you know, genetically, the African population is very different to an Asian population or Caucasian population, yeah? And I'll go back to the first bee study Cosmos ever did was when Dr. Kibwage was there, Francis Demo, and Clive Ondari. We had a product for diabetes called clopropamide. Now, the enzymes, the liver enzymes in different ethnic groups is different. So how long the medicine stays into your blood system is dependent on these enzymes, yeah? And they did it. But at that time, it was a big challenge, yeah? Why am I saying this? I think this was done about 25 years ago, right? We haven't moved. Yeah. We've gone to Camry a number of times. They said, oh, we can do it, we can do it. But when you actually get down to the table and say, this is how we want it done, Kuja Kesho. <laughs> Kesho never comes. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But anyway, I think the landscape will change. Let me get to the bee style. Okay? <clears throat> Being a pharmacist, all of us are pharmacists, right? And we've studied pharmacokinetics, pharmaceutics, whatever it is. Yeah? Remember, I'm talking about 30 years ago, so you know a lot more than me than today. Okay? <laughs> the metabolite are the more active part, yeah? Okay. So we need to get these drugs into the blood, and that's where B comes in. B is affected, molecules are affected by a number of things. Polymorphism, yeah, the active ingredient, the crystal structure of it, the size of the active ingredient, the isomers, the formulation that you do, and even if you use the excipients, how you mix, et cetera, makes a difference. Because you know, the dissolution gets affected, then the bee gets affected. So if that's gonna be the case, then we need to go that journey. And I say to PPB and all that, let's look at this, okay? India has got 1.4 billion people. 1.4 billion people, that's more than Africa. For the local market, there's no bee. There's absolutely no bee, okay? What I'm trying to say there is not that we don't need to do it, but we need to have a process of doing it. Now, the challenges of the local industry here is very simple. The law here doesn't make it viable 
to grow this industry. Somebody will ask you, Vimal, but you know, Cosmos, you're doing, I can see you're growing, growing. Yeah, but growing can be like this, you know. Okay, there's a trajectory to growth. If you look at the, I, want, I just want to capture the whole landscape, yeah, so that you can really get to the nitty gritty of what I think and not about is the B the right way to go or not and when and how. Do you know what's the difference here? Exempt is, exempt is just to everybody seems, okay, there's no VAT, yeah? Zero rating is zero. But the fundamental difference here is that when something is in zero rating, yeah, like the pharmaceutical industry was, anything that was vetable, we could claim back. So it's not a cost to our product. MPs got a, a brainwave they like the word exempt rather than zero because World Bank said, you know, better get out of zero. We don't like zeros because we have to pay back. Exempt sounds very good. So they said, okay, let's pass exempt. If I hire consultants or any services, there's a VAT. If I build a factory, there's a VAT. Yeah? If I buy certain other things, there's VAT. all this I cannot claim back. It's a cost to me, to the company. Whereas an importer doesn't have to pay all that. An importer's bill, Sergi Farm, yeah? Did you say Sergi Farm? Okay. So they have a warehouse and nice offices as well, right? So the electricity bill will be how much? Maybe 300,000, 400,000? So VAT is very little. Yeah. And then we got PAYE, number of workers, 600 workers in Cosmos or something. All these are costs, yeah, that never gets translated. If I build a factory and I need these partitions, yeah, instead of making these walls, partitions, the in thing and clean room, 35% duty. Here we're thinking of growing the pharma industry. Yeah, so the point I'm trying to say is it's like my brain, yeah? my mouth and my hands. My brain is thinking something else, my mouth is saying something else, and my hands are doing something different. That is Kenya government right now, okay? <laughs> so that's what I've told them a lot of times. But anyway, things are changing. B, B cost anything between $80,000, depending on the molecule and depending on the number of subjects and crossover, okay? To $350,000, right? If I have to put this in one product, my ROI is going to take long. Especially when you have different levels of GMPs in this country. Yep. You got some companies at this level, you got some overheads are high. The second thing is that if you got Indian products coming in, being able to sell, there's no way you have a, a market. We, talk about, we talked about market shaping. Yeah, so we need to shape the market in order to get a thriving industry. Yeah. I think they, they bought that. Then the question, the other challenge is, what do you do with legacy molecules? Yeah. And we're talking about class two and four. I understand, you all know class two and class four in BCS, yeah? Okay. So we, bioequivalence is required for class two and four. What happens to the legacy products? The legacy products are the ones that have been in the market for the last 15 years. What are we gonna do about that? So still, they have to work on that one. Maybe they may say, okay, legacy molecules have been there. Let that carry on. Now let's look at the ones with low therapeutic index, and let's work on that. So all these things that we're brainstorming and they've kept a consultant called Panem. I think most of you have heard of them, yeah? And I think there's gonna be a stakeholders meeting on the 19th of August, where they've come out with a thing. Uh, so what else, what else can I tell you about B then? You fire me questions and then I'll see 
if I can answer them. If I can't, I'll duck down here. Okay. <laughs> There was a question that came up because um, currently PPB only give a, a provision for when you're doing bioequivalence studies, a bio waiver is only given for BCS class 1. However, some products that are in BCS class 1 also have additional strengths, which they haven't yet put a way to either apply for the bio waiver for their additional strength. So is that... A, upcoming discussion or we're just going to decide after you do a bio waiver for a product, whatever strength it happens as long as it is in class one or class four? So what happens as far as I know is that if it comes in class one, we're just talking about class two and three, four, yeah? Okay. So those we know we have to do B. But there's a way around it. If you take a strength, yeah? which represents in terms of the ratio of the active ingredient to the excipients. Yeah? So let's look at something like, say, a five milligram active item in a tablet of, say, 100 milligrams. Okay, so the 95 milligrams are excipients. You do a B in on there. If you make a double strength, you don't need to. Why? Because qualitatively and quantitative-wise, you have actually replicated it. Okay? <clears throat> Any other questions? In the sense that with the development that we're having in the industry, there's improvement from the to GPT assessment and the need requirements are coming up as a result of that. How can the industry and the regulators, regulators that is Commerce and Prison Board, collaboratively engage and see how do we shape the industry moving forward? Because ultimately then we know the role of the local industry. And I remember we had a conversation, I was telling you, I did my internship at Cosmos, it made a difference in terms of how I view the industry. How do we move it from where we are to the future that we envision? But how also do we do it by collaborating with the regulator rather than working on industry and having the regulator work separately? So it's a good thing because you need to work together. It's, it's like a husband and wife, yeah? Okay. Divorces can be very painful, right? So, <laughs> so you have to work together. So we are working together, but each one has their own challenges. Yeah? So I think our president, when Moderna was coming, the Moderna can only go into manufacturing of pharmaceuticals here and even Kenya Bags if maturity level of PPB is at this level. Okay, what we're talking about. Because even in ML3, I understand there are three different levels here. Yeah? Vaccine manufacturing, trading in vaccines, and just pharmaceutical other manufacturing. So they've got this pressure that we need to do this because the Americans want to come or we want to put a vaccine plant. That's what they've been forced into that. They know the practical difficulties are going to be. So we are working hand in hand. How do I know that? Because this morning session we had, we had a stakeholders meeting. Yeah. And we have to work together. And some of the things I've talked to them is that on PPV board, there should be somebody representing the industry as well. <clears throat> Any other questions? Well, I wasn't that boring, was I? <laughs> Come on. So what else can I say? Can I talk about the industry, basically? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Maybe my question would be, because it's linked to the WHO GPT, what opportunities do you see with these advancements for the local industry? Okay. So they always say that, you know, when times are difficult, instead of saying, oh, go, I'm going to die and start digging your grave, <laughs> is think of what is opportunities for this wave, right? And the opportunities, as I see it, is that can we use this as to change the policies in this country? What I mentioned earlier, yeah, the VAT, this taxes, etc. Can we change that? Can we also say and use this opportunity that if two companies are manufacturing the same products in this country, stop the imports? That will give you an opportunity to grow. 
when you grow, then the $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 doesn't make a sense. It will all fit into your model. So those are the opportunities. The second opportunity, the other opportunities we have is we always talk about India, India, India. You know, the generics capital of the world, etc. I said, why can't we talk about Kenya being the India of Africa? So there's that opportunity. And so if we've done B and our products are good, there's whole Africa there, 1.2, 1.4 billion people there. Right? So that's a big opportunity. That's what we need to look at. And not say that, oh no, I can't do this now. I can't. It's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. You either decide to walk now or you do it later. And this is one of the stories we did in Cosmos. Because the founder was also a pharmacist. We said, whether PPB expects us to be at this level of GMP, we're not going to go with that. What we're going to do is that we know we're in this industry to treat people, and we know that we have to do it. So let's embark on that. And I'm very happy that we did that because cultures don't change very easily. They take time. Right? Yeah. And right now, to, you can have an instrument to test. You can buy the best machine. You can buy the best infrastructure in front of you. But if you don't have the expertise, the skill sets of a human being, which has been taught all this time, you will fail. So that's one of the things we need to do, and that's how we start working towards it. And I think it'll be a journey. You know, resilience comes by falling, getting up, falling, getting up. Remember when we were babies? Yeah, we used to fall, we used to get up. Now we are walking. So in years to come, I'll be again falling, so. <laughs> So, any other questions? Yeah? Um, I'm just wondering, you mentioned about, okay, Kenya could be the India of, of Africa, but I'm wondering what, what needs we put in place for that to happen? And then, um, okay, if you're saying the government charges this tax, um, who will propose this uh, change of law or something? Okay, who's like? What is the process that should be followed to be able to bring this about? That's a very, very good question. In 1963, maybe I was four years old at that time, but I don't know about it. Yeah, my <laughs> my dad used to tell me about. It. India was the most expensive place for medicine, most expensive, right? And India then said, we've got so many million people, medicine's so expensive, we're going to stop importation. We're going to create a cottage industry. A cottage industry is a small manufacturers in the garage except making medicines, OK? And many, many years ago, even before that, GSK used to make from a garage as well. It's only thalidomide changed everything, yeah? So then what happened? is under the arm of the prime minister's office came the pharma sector. They closed all that. They refused to accept patents. And they told multinationals, you want to sell your products? Put your factory here. We want Indian jobs. And that's the first technology transfer you could even see. Because the people working in that tennis, in the GSKs or all these other companies, that's what they learned. And this is where they are today. I was just talking earlier, I have a cabinet full of studies, right? He wrote theses. How many years ago? I wrote it in 2002. 2002. He just told me nothing has changed since 2002. You just realize there's a two in front of the two as well. <laughs> so the point is there's so many studies. IFC has paid, World Bank has paid, so many donors. It all talks the same thing, right? In many of my talks I did at Harvard this year or Kigali when the president was there or here, I said, you know what, nine-tenths of winning anything it's the execution. If you, if you just keep on talking about it, it's not moving. 
We're just talking about it, you know. You need to start executing. And why don't you, because our present president was very, very determined to drive the health sector, correct? <coughs> he wanted jobs and everything. So I said, why don't you move this portfolio under your office, under your office, so you can push it, like India did. It didn't happen. Now, the other, other thing in Kenya is that what PPB sees, what MOH sees, Ministry of Industry sees, the Treasury sees, and KRA sees, they all disconnect. They all disconnect. That is why it's not moving. It's like having a football team wanting to win, but one is running this way and one is running that way and one is running this way and the ball is just somewhere. <laughs> That's the problem. And I hope it will change and I think it will change. Yeah. Any other questions? By the way, it's not a miserable world, huh? It's still good. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you again for inviting me. Or is it telling me to get lost now? <laughs> thank you very much.